Hi, I'm Blake, Duke 3478 on uh, iBoats Forum. We're going to start video number one of the OMC, the Mercruiser uh, SEI spot. If you looked at the unboxing photos, you would have seen these things already in the contents. This is the three boxes that come from SEI when you order the conversion kit and complete SE116 drive. So everything's in there. So we'll start with first things first. First step in this project, and it's already been done uh, with mine, is to get your OMC drive off. And that's accomplished pretty simply by taking off the bolts that are located here. Sorry, the nuts that are located in these three spots. And there's three corresponding on the other side. There's six of them total. And then also the uh, nuts for the uh, trim. For the trim cylinders. Alright, make this easy. Use an extension and a U-joint socket uh, adapter. You'll be able to get into these spots pretty easily like that. If it's the first time you've taken them off, they'll be really hard to remove. If you got a ratchet with an extension on the arm like this, or maybe even a uh, torque wrench, it might give you a little more torque. Or a uh, breaker bar or a, some way to give you a little more leverage sometimes that helps. Uh, it's 5 8 will fit the uh, both the trim cylinders and the six nuts to remove the drive itself. So that step's been done. Alright another step that I've taken already and I fully recommend it and if not uh, replacing it just make sure you check your throttle. One of the things you'll have to do eventually is to change the, the throw of the shift portion which on this throttle are these arms here. You can see that if I go into reverse, this side pulls, this side pushes from neutral to reverse. From neutral to forward, they go the opposite direction. This bar here operates the throttle. You can see how that corresponds with your throttle motion. So this operates the actual throttle cable, it opens and closes the butterflies on the carburetor, as opposed to these arms, which operate the shift cable, the primary shift cable between the throttle and the shifter plate. These will have to be switched, so instead of a, a pushing configuration, it'll be pulling. So your shift cable will have to be switched from this side to this side. That's a step I've taken already, so I won't show that later, but it's already done in the throttle that's installed. All right, so here you can see the gimbal housing and the bell housing with uh, everything removed. These are the six nuts back on here. I just keep them here to uh, Keep it organized. So this is what it'll look like once it comes off. Trim cylinders, once you take this out, remember there won't be anything supporting the drive, so have a 2x4 or something like that for it to sit on. You can move these out of the way. And then once these six nuts come off, your drive will pull free. Just be careful because the drive shaft is going to come out of here. U joints will let the drive shaft drop, so it's good to support that with something. Or just be ready to catch it. It's going to be greasy, it's going to be kind of nasty. Sometimes there's, there's going to be grease from the, uh, the bellows in there, so just watch it as you take it out. So this is what it looks like uh, when everything's removed. Next step we'll do is to put the upper and lower half of the new drive together, and then we'll come back and start on the removal of the old OMC belt. All right, if you didn't see the unboxing uh, pictures, here's one of the two packages from SEI. Here's the uh, lower unit, obviously. This is what it looks like in the packaging. Down here, the upper. It comes wrapped. Yeah, it's, uh, usually yeah, it's got a lot better wrap in that uh, in the box. U joints are already greased. Still take a look at them, obviously. But if you get down and look at the, the zerks, they are greased already. I don't know if you can see that or not. Then here, this is the notch that will be put in it by the factory if you order the. Uh, conversion kit and the drive at the same time, or at least the upper at the same time. They'll uh, go ahead and make that notch for you. This allows it to trim all the way down and still clear the, uh, the bell housing. Otherwise, this would interfere with some parts. What we're going to do right now is uh, join these two halves according to the instruction manual. And they do give you a pretty complete manual for the installation of the conversion kit. The instructions for joining the two halves you have to download. I've added them in here kind of in the order when it would come up. But it's uh, 
just two pages of instructions. Hopefully it's uh, fairly simple. So we'll get that done then. Okay, another thing you want to take note of are the, uh, the product tags. They're red on mine anyway. Right here you'll see the number and the little tag. That's on the upper unit. In the lower, it's in the corresponding spot right here. There's numbers on there just for warranty purposes. You probably want to have that in case you have to call them for anything. That's the first thing they ask for. All right, step one in the manual is to make sure that the water tube is snugly pushed into the grommet that's at the top of the unit. The black rubber grommet's up here. All right, something you might want to do, it's not necessary, it's not in the manual, but you could take off this seal, four bolts that hold down the impeller housing here. Just be real gentle on the gasket because uh, you know, it's sealed under the first time. I like to have a little bit of Vaseline in the impeller for the first time and it spins. It may not be necessary, it's not part of the manual, but uh, something I like to do since it's uh, going to be spinning for the first time. Like I said, it may not be necessary, but it just makes me feel better. There have been some issues people reported with the uh, inner part of the impeller separating from the veins. It just makes me feel better, like there might be a little less of a chance that something's going to happen. If you do take this step, it's not in the manual, but make sure that you get the key back on the flat part of the, uh, the drive shaft here. That's going to correspond with the impeller housing in the middle there. Get everything back together like it was, nice and snug. You can also add some gasket sealer to this one here, but you can see this is a nice rubber impregnated gasket and it looks like that's going to have a pretty good sealing surface, so not necessary to add anything. Uh, according to the manual, this is an upgraded part. Okay, next step is to install the black coupler on the top of the impeller housing. It's got an O-ring in here. So I'm going to use a little bit of Vaseline just to help it uh, get into the spot. Okay, so we're going to install this black coupler here on top of the color housing. It's got an O-ring inside. Just be careful as you put it on. Kind of rotate it. Make sure that O-ring gets on there the right way. Make sure it's nice and snug. This is the water tube guide. It goes inside of the black coupler like that. All right, with the uh, water tube and the coupler installed, everything's ready to stab together. A little bit of marine grease on the splines there on the end. And uh, this part of the shifter in the lower unit has to be kind of angled backwards so it can fit through the hole here that's cut out. All right, so watching the uh, water tube and the drive shaft. Just keep things lined up. You can look in through the back and see how your alignment is. You might need to uh, turn the, the U-joints a little bit to line up the splines. You'll kind of feel it when it's right. And the upper and lower fit together. There's alignment dowels on the front very front and very back. Once you get to that point, you're pretty much there. Okay, now uh, once the two halves are together, you're going to install the four bolts on either side. Washer on the bolt. And then use the nuts with the washer head on them. I've got the unit, both units turned upside down just because it's easier to balance it on the upper than it is to try to balance it on the skeg while you're working on it. Still got to keep a hand on it to not let it knock off the bench. So there's one here, one here, and then two on the other side in the same spot. Okay, the next bolt to be installed is right here on the transom side of the unit. They call it the front bolt. It's this one with the little washer head on it. It's going to be a uh, half inch bolt. It goes in right behind the shifter rod or in front of the shifter rod if you want to count the front of the bolt here corresponds to the drive shaft. Next one to be installed is this little bolt that goes in under the anode. It's a 916 and it's got the little star washer. Okay, once the uh, 
all the six bolts are in to hold the top and the bottom unit together. Go ahead and install your prop that you're going to use. I've cheated and used the uh, OMC prop. They don't want to tell you this, but it will actually mate up to the splines. Bolt should fit. Might have some clearance issues here that you have to grind out. But the main thing is, once the anode, that's also a trim tab, is installed, got to make sure that you have prop clearance. You see I've got some, some touching going on. So we're just going to mark the anode for a notch, take that out on the grinder, then reinstall it. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that silver. Okay, with the anode notched for clearance now, you can see that it's uh, got enough room to clear the prop. It's a little bit more than it looks like from this angle. The uh, bolt for the anode is going to be a 3 8 Allen. Comes in from underneath, there's a rubber cap goes in this hole, bolt goes up through there, and into the anode. Alright, here's a shot of my uh, helper and the completed drive, upper and lower put together. If you've done a Mercruiser or drive before, it's probably nothing new to you. Just lining up those hoses, the uh, six bolts to hold everything together, and then making sure your anode is, uh, and your trim anode is going to be clear of the, of the problem. It's got clearance. Uh, next step will be to get the old gimbal housing and the old uh, bell housing off and then install the actual conversion kit.